Welcome back. Thought I'd just do a quick video about assembling the bottom end of a 3T GTE. Uh, for those that have a 2TG, it's pretty much identical. So uh, there's not much to it. There's just a few of the uh, timing chain sprockets and chains. There's the number two chain tensioner guide. Another guide there for the chain. Uh, before you start this, one thing you need to do is to ensure the timing's right, make sure the keyway on the crank is pointing up, and that's when the number one cylinder is at top dead center. While they're up, you want that key on the auxiliary shaft also to be up. This is a new timing chain from Kamiri, high performance chain. Uh, one thing you need to do is put the chain on the sprockets and fit them to the shafts at the same time, otherwise that chain just won't go on. And that sprocket also is directional so the worn face here that I'm just cleaning actually faces towards the engine and the other way you know is the opposite face which we're looking at now has a couple of timing marks so there's one there and there is another one just that dot there so that points outwards so simply put the chain on rotate the sprockets top and bottom so that you orientate the keyway so they're both pointing up at the same time that little sprocket on the crank also is directional and see that little timing mark at the bottom that must point away from the engine so giving it a go now trying to line this up and what you'll see is I'm a little bit out so what I'm going to do is take this off again and rotate that top sprocket just by one tooth and then it should pretty much be okay the other thing is that auxiliary shaft at the top, there's nothing actually holding that in at this point. So uh, a good thing to do is actually in the top of the cylinder block, you stick a screwdriver and it goes in the third hole and that will actually stop that from pushing back. And you can just see it actually started to push back right then. Uh, looks like now it's sliding on nicely and I've got those timing marks pretty right. So as I said, stop that shaft going back. You can see in a moment, third hole back, stick a screwdriver down there, and that will stop that auxiliary shaft getting pushed back any further. So here it is, push it on, top one went on good, bottom sprocket slightly tight towards the last three or four mil, so uh, I just got a little rubber hammer just to knock that that on that last little bit and that was fine chain fit nice uh, obviously Camiri makes some very good stuff just give it a quick blow down make sure there's no particles left on there now this is the second chain sprocket and this is to drive the cams uh, that one can only go in one way as well and there's a timing mark put the bolt on and in the book it's got in the 3TG manual 44 to 50 pounds per foot so we'll tension that up the way I do that stick a screwdriver through the hole gently tension this up and that is pretty much done now the lower chain tensioner here, what you need to do or what you should do is just pry open this little plate. Once you lift that far enough, that little plunger will come out. There's a spring behind there. Clean it out. I, I'd clean this before so it's quite clean already. And then what you want to do is you want to top, top up that little reservoir with clean motor oil. So I'm putting in Penrite run-in oil. And what that does is just make sure there's oil there so there's a bit of tension against that chain when you first start it up. So I put the oil in there, gently put it back together and then push that back plate back on. And you'll see in a moment from the rear view, there's a little pin that sticks out, looks like a pin, and it's got a hole. See that hole? Uh, just see it there, that hole is where the oil enters from the, from the oil supply side of the engine. So that's all ready. Once you've done that, try not to push that plunger down too many times or too far because you'll obviously just push the oil straight back out. Once that tension is in, there's another guide here. 
and this guide needs to have a small gap between the chain and that guide. Uh, to talk, talk about half a mil, so I spend a bit more time here, and I've got that gap to 0.3 of a millimeter, so it's just a little bit uh, closer than what Toyota states. This is the front cam uh, chain cover. I've had that face machined with the block. It's another good idea to make sure everything matches up properly. I did polish this a while ago, and it's been to the machine shop. It's got a bit grotty and greasy, so I just give it a bit of polish on there, give it a quick rub down and uh, it's come up right, I didn't want to go too crazy but I do want it to be clean so a good clean down, then what I'm going to do is put a new seal, new front crank seal I personally like the Toyota seals, the OEM, so I've bought the OEM here and you may have noticed from previous videos, I like to hammer the seals in using the old seal sitting on top. So, start to push it in there. This one's not actually that tight. Put the old seal on top. Gently tap it around. And that is pretty much ready to go. And when you put these into the engine, you need to lubricate the lip of that seal. So, I normally just put assembly lube on there, or you could put a bit of grease as well. It's fine. Put the gasket on, use a bit of high temperature silicon on both surfaces, on the block as well as the chain cover. Don't put a lot on here. At the end of the day, you could probably get away with no silicon, but I always put a bit there just so that any minute sort of variances can be taken up. If you put too much here, all that will happen is it'll squeeze out and you could potentially have a slither of silicon inside your engine that could come off at some point and cause some problems so thin coats all you need go around there and then uh, get ready to put this onto the block now another thing to remember is before you put that on you must put in that top timing chain just install it on the sprocket if you forget to do that you will be taking this cover off again because it simply won't go on uh, so that needs to be done at this point. Tension it up. Don't go crazy with the tension. Probably 15 to 20 pounds max. Uh, I normally just do these up by hand. And that is done. Once you've done that, you just want to cut off the excess bit of gasket on that top face to make sure it's nice and flush. And then when we put the head gasket on, we do put a bit of sealant just at that point as well. So both sides there I've cut off. This is what they call a windage tray. It, it uh, supposedly stops oil splashing around. It's from Morosso. I had to modify it just a little bit there to get it to fit into that groove properly. It was no big deal. Uh, so to fit that, you need to undo the two bolts from the main bearing at both ends of the crank. Put the tray on and put the bolts back in and then obviously tension them up with the correct tension. And there's, you can see the gap through the windage tray to enable you to do that. Once that's in, bit of uh, assembly lube on the oil pump. Put the oil pump in and that is pretty much the bottom end done. I did buy myself a brand new Morosso high volume sump, uh, aluminium sump which we'll see in a moment. Uh, that oil pump just has one bolt holding it. You can see the studs I've put around the base there. Put a bit of sealant just on the joins, front and rear. That's an OEM gasket. I personally don't like aftermarket sump gaskets for these engines, so I went and bought an OEM. Uh, it seems to be much better quality. Put that on, get the Morosso sump, wiggle that into place, tension it up, and we are looking very good. Uh, the next stage will be, I'll put the alternator and the belts and so forth on the water pump, but I'm, I'll make another video when I put the head together, so that's probably the next major piece of work, and uh, it should be pretty close to putting in the car sometime soon. So, yep, yeah, it's looking good. Stay tuned, and uh, the next video will be out soon.